Hey everybody, this is Praxis, and in this video we're going to be talking about why I know you're going to fail when this shit hits the fan. That's right, in this video I want to talk about failure. Failure is a part of any endeavor that anyone is ever really going to be engaged in for any amount of time. I think a lot of people in our culture think of, you know, success and failure, you know, one is something that you should always achieve and I think everybody should aim for success. But I, I think that a lot of times people think that your life is a failure if there are failures in it. And failure is just a part of life. Whenever you're trying things, especially when you're you know, kind of out on the edge doing something a little bit new, something a little bit different, uh, when you're not relying on the safety net of kind of following the leader and doing what everybody else is doing, uh, you know, failure is just going to be you know, part of that process. And I think it's really important to accept that, acknowledge that, and uh, be comfortable with that, especially if you're in an emergency situation where you're gonna be doing things and experiencing things, uh, you know, many of them for the first time. And whenever you try something out for the first time, and I know this from a lot of personal experience because while I haven't lived through a lot of emergencies myself, I'm always pushing the envelope, trying different things, trying different experiments. Uh, and, you know, most of the time things go pretty well. Uh, but that's not always the case, and sometimes things don't go well. And if you're not accustomed to the, uh, the feeling of failing at something, that can really throw a lot of people uh, for a curveball, especially, you know, I see this a lot of times in kids because, you know, our culture really is always uh, driving this message into kids that if you fail at something, that means you are a failure. Failures, to me, is my opportunity to kind of feel the edges of reality and kind of figure out where all those kind of edges are. It's like feelers, if you will, uh, where, you know, when you bump into something, you realize, okay, that's as far as you can go in that direction. Uh, and, you know, you kind of go off over somewhere else and you kind of like bump into something over there and you kind of feel out, okay, well, that's the limit over over there. You know, a lot of times in life, people have been, you know, it's been drilled into them that if they kind of hit up against that wall, you know, that's a failure uh, because they didn't stop before they got to that wall. And, uh, you know, people see that as a bad thing. It's not, it's a good thing. Failure is a great opportunity to learn where those boundaries are. And how you react to these, you know, failures is, is really important, especially in an emergency situation. You know, do you react to a failure by changing your plan, uh, you know, changing your general direction, trying something else new, or do you react with frustration? Uh, you know, I think a lot of people watching this video are gonna have kind of the knee-jerk re reaction that, well, no, I'm not going to be one of these people that just, you know, blows up, you know, if I'm in a SHGF situation and something doesn't work, I'm just going to keep going and I'm going to keep going and I'm not going to, like, react to it on an emotional level. But I think a lot of people, maybe most people, uh, when I see people in a situation that um, they don't like, something that seems like it's thrust upon them, you know, and there's all sorts of situations where, uh, you know, you're, you're trying something and then some kind of circumstance will, you know, fall in your lap and prevent you from uh, doing something that you would plan to do. Actually, this deck that I'm on is a really good example of this. This deck is about eight feet wide. Originally, this deck was going to be um, double that. It was going to be 16 feet wide. But uh, when I was setting up for the footings for this deck, there was a tree over there, in the uh, back over in the corner, and one of the footings was going to have to be pretty much right on top of the tree. I ended up cutting the tree down just because it was a, it was an ill tree, and I figured I'm probably going to like build the deck, and then that's the day the tree's going to fall down, crush everything. It was a lot easier and safer to knock the tree down beforehand, uh, you know, and I need firewood anyway, so it's no big thing. Uh, but where the tree stump was, it really uh, it frustrated my attempts to, and I don't mean frustrated in a emotional sense. I mean it in the sense that it made it such that putting one of the posts where I had planned on putting the post, uh, it, it just wasn't going to work without a lot of difficulty because it's really hard to put a post where there is an old tree stump because if you ever worked with trying to get a tree stump out, uh, you know, you use axes and chainsaws on wood and you use shovels and pickaxes on dirt. And when you got a, a mixture of the two of those, it, it can be a real uh, difficult situation to get through. So I, instead of just getting frustrated and getting angry and getting mad, I just decided, okay, well, I don't really need a deck that's 16 feet wide. I'll just make it eight feet wide and I'll be totally fine with that. And it's gonna be a really great space. And because I made it smaller, I opened up the possibility to maybe kind of enclose the deck because if the deck was really wide, uh, it was 
it would have been a lot more difficult to put a roof on it because with a pitch of the roof uh, going up against the firewood shed here, by the time the roof got all the way down to the, the end over there, you'd, have, you'd be like, you know, cr uh, crouched down uh, over in the corner there. But by shrinking up the deck, it opened up the opportunity to, well, you know what, maybe instead of just putting a, a railing here, maybe I extend this up and make it a short wall and that'll receive a roof, uh, you know, some rafters from the other side. And I took this, uh, this failure to do what, you know, to execute the deck as I had planned to do it, and I stopped, I reevaluated. I thought, well, are there opportunities here? Uh, you know, be, I'm kind of being forced to do things in a different way. Are there, does this open up opportunities for me? And this is a really critical, um, you know, kind of approach to dealing with situations when something kind of gets thrust on you. I planned on doing one thing, reality, you know, slapped me in the face and said, you know, you're not going to do that, or at least you're not going to do that easily. Uh, and, uh, you know, I took those lemons and I tried to make lemonade out of them. And I'm really, I'm pleased actually with the, um, the situation uh, that I've got here. This actually solves some other problems for me with storage, because I'm going to be storing a lot of tools out here. Um, so I took a situation where it was kind of like a failure and I turned it into, I'm sorry, distracted, a little uh, chipmunks chasing each other over here. Uh, and I turned it into something that was uh, kind of opportunities. And that is, that is really important when you're in a survival situation to, uh, you know, when you get slapped in the face with reality, to take that as an opportunity to try to, uh, you know, adapt and change direction. And I'll get back to what I was saying earlier, you know, what kind of person are you? Are, the, are you the kind of person that's not going to get emotionally invested and you're just going to like pivot on the, on that spot and be totally fine with that? I think a lot of people get really frustrated when the way that they would like the world to be, the way that they projected their day was going to go, when that gets frustrated. Uh, and I, you know, as simple as, is the car coming down the road? We got a delivery coming? Is this going to frustrate my video production right now? It is. It's a UPS coming down this, down the road. I could either get really pissed about this, or I could stop the camera, get my delivery, and I'll be right back. Okay, there we go. So, uh, you know, that was an opportunity to get frustrated. Uh, you know, things weren't going the way I planned. It was in the middle of my video take, or I could take it as an opportunity to create some audience retention and let you know that at the end of this video, I'm gonna open these guys up. So if you wanna see what's in these with me, um, I'll pop these open at the end of the video. But first I wanted to, uh, you know, just kind of finish up my thought, which is, you know, what kind of person uh, do you think that you likely are? I see people, you know, a lot of times, even like in traffic, you know, if somebody like pulls in front of you and you didn't plan on that person pulling in front of you, or if someone fails to yield, you know, it's all, you know, driving stuff. It really brings it out of people where, you know, the tiniest little thing, the tiniest little inconvenience, the tiniest little, like I hadn't planned on tapping on my brake a little bit, uh, you know, to avoid hitting this person that pulled out in front of me, but they pulled out and I had to tap my brake. And then, you know, they're digging into their horn and they get really, really frustrated. They take something that doesn't need to be emotional at all. It's just, you know, you're driving and you, you might have to tap on your brake or something like that. And people get really, really emotional about it. Do you get really, really emotional uh, when something that you planned was going to go one way goes a different way? If that is the case, if you're feeling that during, you know, everyday normal life when, you know, the stakes aren't really that high right now, you know, how do you think you're going to be reacting when you're in a life and death situation and the stakes really are pretty high? You know, now is the opportunity to kind of practice these skills of, you know, rolling with the punches. You know, if, if things don't go the way that you were planning uh, in a big way or in a little way, you know, don't get emotional about it. You know, just reevaluate uh, and, you know, make the best of it. it. Again, if you're driving down the road and somebody pulls out and you have to tap your brake a little bit, just figure out a way of integrating that one half second of delay into your day without getting super, you know, frustrated about it. And, you know, I know I'm kind of joking about the traffic thing, but I, I, I think it's a really good barometer for the way a lot of people, uh, you know, tend to react when something doesn't go their way. Something, you know, seems like a curveball, somebody, you know, acting like an idiot, you know, and, uh, you, know, how, how, you know, how do you, how do you react to that? So that's what I wanted to talk about in this video is, you know, when you are in any kind of a situation, especially when it is something that's novel and, uh, you know, you know, you haven't experienced it before, there are going to be failures. There's going to be lots of failures. You know, what are your preps? You know, people talk about like, you know, if you don't, you know, if municipal water stops pumping to your house, you know, what is your prep for that? Uh, and you have to understand that, you know, your preps may fail as well, may very well fail. Uh, you know, for critical things like water, you shouldn't only have one prep or at least not only one plan uh, for, 
you, you know, securing something like that. You know, if you have municipal water going to your house, you know, you should probably also have a backup well. And if, you know, your backup well fails to function because, you know, you, you, your, your pump breaks or something like that, you know, you should maybe have the, the opportunity to have like a manual pump. Uh, and, you know, barring that, maybe your, your well itself goes dry, you, you should have the ability to collect rainwater so you can get rainwater from your roof. Uh, you know, maybe it's not raining, do you have a stream on your, your property? I'm, I'm just kind of going mentally through my head about, you know, my different layers of, uh, you know, preparedness when it comes to water. But for critical things, you, you really should have multiple layers of it because things are always, always failing. It's, it's the one, <laughs> that's the one thing that you can count on is that things are going to be, you know, unreliable, especially when you really, really need them. So make some uh, plans ahead, uh, you know, for things that are really critical, have multiple layers of prep. So if something breaks, it's, you know, not, it doesn't thrust you immediately into a life and death situation because, you know, your, your first line of defense uh, kind of prep failed. And beyond that, just in your normal day-to-day -day life, when things don't go your way, when things go in... You know, you know, some kind of a surprise direction, especially if it's perceived as kind of negative, or if there's some kind of a failure. How do you react to that? How do you react to that emotionally? And if you react to that in emotional in an, an emotional way, that is maybe not all that helpful and wastes a lot of energy and distracts you from really what you need to be doing. Now is a great opportunity to try to, you know, practice those still skills of staying calm. And I, I tell you what, it's not just going to benefit you; it's going to benefit everyone around you as well. So let's crack into these guys. I don't, I don't have a knife right now. Uh, my my knife's usually where I open these things up. So I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna improvise. We got a stick down here. You know, my uh, my knife prep failed me because I don't want to walk all the way over there. So I'm going down to the second tier of this pokey kind of stick. I think I should be able to puncture the tape. Yeah, there we go. And that gets us in there. Let's see what's in here. Oh, this is a Christmas present for my boy. And he doesn't watch my videos, I don't think. Although I don't know. You know what? <laughs> I'm not going to reveal what it is. It is. It's a pretty cool Christmas present for my boy. Uh, at the time of this recording, it is mid-September. I've been buying Christmas presents for him all through the, the summer because you know I want to want to be ahead of the curve and don't like waiting to the last minute for anything. I think that's all that's in there. It's just a Christmas present for my boy. How about this one? Let's see. I'm sorry I can't show you that one, but if you happen to watch the video, it would just it would ruin all the surprise. All right, let's see, what is this? Oh, okay, uh, I can show you this one. This is a, I did a review of Yatoshi knives a while ago. In my review of Yatoshi knives, which are a type of knife that I bought myself, uh, you know, sometimes people send me things for review and sometimes, you know, most of, <laughs> most of the time, I'm just buying things for myself. Um, I was cutting, I think it was cutting some cheese, you know, uh, literally, not figuratively. And the, the blade just snapped on the knife. And I did a review about it, about like, you know, you want to be careful about these Yatoshi knives. Um, and then recently I was doing a review uh, of something that was sent to me, a bread slicer by a company called Piccolo Haas or something like that. And they sent me the bread slicer and a bread knife uh, to test together. And I was really impressed by their bread knife. Uh, it just went right through like butter, figuratively. And um, after I was really positive about that, they, they said, hey, would you like to try out some of our other knives? And I said, absolutely, sure. So they sent them to me for free. And this is a set of knives. I'm going to be doing a review on these. Uh, it's, it's kind of like a travel set of uh, Japanese style knives. Uh, and I'll let you know what I think about them um, in, a, in a future video. It is kind of a neat thing when you have a, a channel like this. It's like, I, I don't make hardly any money from YouTube. I mean, it's like, maybe like somewhere between 75 bucks and 100 bucks a month. So, you know, like two or three dollars a day, somewhere in there uh, is what I make off the channel. But, you know, you do get sent some kind of fun stuff now and then. Um, this is, a, well, it's another Christmas present for my boy. And yeah, those are two Christmas presents for my boy that I, can, I, I you know, can't share on camera right now. Um, so yeah, that's what's in there. And I'll, I'll be having a knife review later on. And in that knife review, I'm actually going to be uh, kind of talking about the Yatoshis again, because I, you know, I still kind of use them, but I had another one snap on me. Uh, and that's dangerous. You know, if you're, you know, you know you're, you're cutting through something and the knife blade snaps, you know, especially in an emergency situation, if the hospitals weren't functioning and I'm using my Yatoshi knives. And I don't know if this, I don't want to get into libel or whatever. These are just experiences that have happened to me. I don't know if all Yatoshi knives are like this or if I just got a bad batch. Um, but uh, yeah, I've had two of them just snap on me, just cutting through bread. 
Yeah, one thing was bread and one, <laughs> one thing was cheese. Not a, n nothing hard. So uh, these uh, Pickle Haas, and this one, it's the same company, but they, they call these Siokami knives. Uh, you know, we'll see if these are decent. And I'll be honest if they're not. That's one of the reasons that I don't do a lot of recurring um, uh, product reviews on my channel is that... Uh, you know, I'll like a few things, and then something will come under, you know, come into my possession that I don't like. And there's very few companies that will ever send you anything again if you do a negative review. And you know, my integrity is worth more than getting, you know, more free stuff. Especially, I don't, I don't really get a lot of people. I'm sorry, I'm getting a little long-winded with this, but if you're if you're curious about this, you know, my insight as a, a YouTube influencer, um, it's kind of weird that more people aren't honest about junk products because I think. You know, most of the time, you know, these people that, you know, don't have, like, huge channels, you're not getting really paid for this stuff. They just like, will send you free stuff. And I think a lot of people, they don't want to be kicked off that gravy train. So they're, like, kind of, you know, positive about, uh, you know, a lot of these products, maybe more so than they than they deserve. i got the chipmunk over here again. Um, but, you know, I've always been kind of curious about, like, why do people not want to get kicked off a gravy train of free products if the stuff's junk? <laughs> why wouldn't you just be honest about it? Because, like, why would you even want the stuff for free if it's junk? So, I don't know. I'm just always honest about it. And, uh, yeah. And, you know, the chips fall where they do. I love the little chipmunks around here, but, you know, my garden doesn't like them. Well, that's it. I hope you found this video helpful. If you're, uh, if you get, you have a lot of stress and anxiety when things don't go your way uh, in life, you know, work on that now because uh, in a emergency situation, it's not going to be an opportunity for working on those life skills then. That's it. Thanks for watching. Hey, YouTube preppers. If you enjoyed this video, here's another that I think you might like. But before you click on it, I wanted to take a moment to thank all the people you see on the right-hand side of your screen. They help to support all the work that I do here over at Patreon.com. If you'd like to join them and get your name added to the list, the link's below.